and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we have a puzzle by Cam Dennis for you. Uh, Cam has appeared on the channel five times before, no less. Um, but Mark has always been the one who's had the pleasure. Uh, this is my first time solving one of Cam's pu puzzles. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and uh, yeah, this one's called It's Gonna Be a Long Night. Night spelt as in the chess piece, not as in the the period of darkness. Um, anything to mention before we kick off with this one? Just a couple of things. Um, we've got these um, daily cryptic crossword clues over on Twitter, so do follow us if you want to get better at cryptic crosswords. Um, the uh, handle on Twitter is at cryptic cracking. And then on Patreon, we've got our Wonders of the World Sudoku Hunt, which is still going great guns. And over the weekend, we're going to release um, a video um, of sh showing how to solve Scott Strosal's Tracking the Triptych um, uh, Sudoku Challenge, which we released on Patreon a few weeks ago. And in fact, that video is featuring Scott himself explaining his own puzzles, which I always think is quite interesting to hear. So look out for that. We've got loads of other stuff coming up on Patreon very soon, uh, including a brand new competition. So it's it's exciting times. Now, what are the rules of Cam's puzzle? Let me read them to you. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. Uh, digits may not repeat along either of the marked diagonals. So we've got a sort of Sudoku X thing going on. So these cells here have to contain all of the digits from one to nine once each, and the same obviously on the other diagonal. And then we've got the complicated bit. So cells separated by a taxi cab distance of four may not contain the same digit. Now that sounds complicated. I'll explain what it means very simply in a moment, but let me let me run through the rubric first. A taxi cab distance from cell A to cell B is the minimum possible distance from cell A to cell B when traversed only through orthogonal cells. In other words, if two cells are H or is horizontal moves and V vertical moves away from one another, their taxicab distance from one another is H plus V. So what does this mean? Well, this means that today we are looking at a Tigger bounce constraint because let's imagine the central cell of the grid is a one Basically, we're saying one cannot go in any of, let me get this right, I think it's just those squares actually, these squares. So let me highlight them and then we'll talk about why, why this is a problem. So it's like a long knight's move, which is why the title of the puzzle is what it is, because a knight's move would take the one to here. And this way, it's sort of an, a bigger jump. And why is this a taxi cab distance of four? Well. It's one, two, three vertical moves and one horizontal. So that's four altogether. Similarly, this square is ruled out. This is slightly uh, slightly different, I suppose, than a knight's move. It's not really a long knight's move in an ordinary sense, but it's still a taxi cab distance of four because one, two horizontal, two vertical is what takes. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know what I mean. One, two, three, four. So it's a taxi cab distance of four from this one to this cell, and therefore this cell cannot be a one. And that obviously is how we're gonna solve the puzzle. So do have a look yourselves. I've no idea how hard this is. It's very beautiful looking, um, but the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. And my eyes are drawn immediately actually to the, um, I think that says seven. That is quite hard to see. If I get a chance, I will clarify this afterwards. If that does not say seven, this is going to be a very bad video. Um, but I think it says seven. Now I can see this definitely says four. Um, but if I can fix that somehow uh, in our software, I will just so it's a bit clearer. Two five there. The 12 clue now is forced. It can't be three nine, it can't be five seven. So it's got to be four eight. These squares have got to be six, seven, and nine. This one doesn't appear to have have a total at all. So presumably, I think that's just in there for symmetry purposes. It seems it's just in there to make the puzzle look beautiful. Well, I can't blame Cam for that. That's that's fair enough. Um, now, what have we got around these crosses? I, I'm used to crosses now after propellers, which was the pu beautiful puzzle I did yesterday by Fritz Dis. Um, well, 
I do know that 33 in 5 cells, there's only two ways of doing that. It's either 7, 8, 9 plus 3 and 6, or it's 7, 8, 9 plus 4 and 5. So these 33 cages definitely have 7, 8 and 9 in them. 17 cage. There's two ways of doing that as well. That's always got 1, 2 and 3 in it, combined with either um, 5, 6 or 4, 7. Uh, the 21... I'm not actually sure I know anything about that. So, so we're probably, I think, I can't see anything on the diagonals. I think we're going to have to think about the, the Tigger bounce uh, and the, these long night's moves. I'm very interested in the central cell because I can see immediately the central cell is ruling out whatever I put in the central cell can't appear in those three squares um, and the same will be true all around the grid so this square seems to be putting some sort of constraint on the so whatever goes in the central square Um, has to appear in either of the crosses in each row and column, like row 2, row 8, column 2, column 8. But if we put 9 in there, could we hide 9? We obviously can't put 9 in there. So if there was a 9 in the central square of the grid, maybe I'll highlight these squares. That's why I'm thinking about this. Um, if we put 9 here, 9 couldn't go in the 17 cage because it would break. We can't make 4 squares add up to only 8. A minimum 4 squares can add up to is 10. So the 9 would have to go up here in column 2. And if it's in it, it would have to be in one of those two positions. So it would be, yeah, it would just be in down here as well. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm oh, sorry. I'm thinking about this totally. I'm totally overcomplicating things, which will not surprise any of you. I know. Right. Let's let's slow down and complete the purpling. Yeah, we have to do more purpling. That's purple, that's purple, that's purple, and that's purple. If we do more purpling, it becomes clear what's going on. Whatever goes in the central cell of the grid cannot go in any of the purple squares. Now, that's massive. That's absolutely massive, because that means that whatever goes in the central cell of the grid has to go in all four crosses. And... Hopefully that's pretty clear, but let, let's just, let me just show you. Let's make this a six. If this is a six, where does six now go in column two of the grid? And the answer is I have not got a Scooby-Doo. I do not know. But let's pick a cell. Pick a cell, any cell. Let's pick this one. Let's imagine this was the six. Well, what does this do to row two of the grid? Now in row two, I've got to put a six somewhere, but I can't put it in these two squares. I can't put it in the purple squares, so it's going to have to go in those squares. One of these two will have to be a 6. Well, now where do I put the 6 in column 8? I can't put it in these two squares. There's already a 6 in this cage and, this, and the box. So it can't go there. It can't go in purple, so it's got to go here, one of those two squares. Now where do I put it down here? Again, it can't go in these squares anymore. So it, and it can't go in purple, so it's got to go in these squares. And that logic will work no matter which square we pick. The logic is symmetrical. So actually, we now... Oh, I was going to say we know what goes in the centre. I still don't know, do I? What I do know is it's not 9. It's definitely not 9, because I cannot put 9 in the 17 cage. So that gives us a little deduction. Um, so whatever I put in the centre has to go in all four crosses. So seven and six look possible. 
If it was 6, you would have to put the same total into both 33 cages. Does that break the diagonal, I'm wondering? Hang on, let me just think about this. If I've got 3, 6, 7, 8, 9 in both crosses... Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that does break the diagonal. Right, you can't put 6 in the centre because... Whew, you've got to now put 6 in this cross and you've got to put 6 in, in this cross for the reasons we just discussed. But the only way of making 33 using a 6 is with exactly the digits... 3, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And now look at the diagonal. Now these square. Uh, there's a few ways of thinking about this, but th it's pretty clear these four squares here can only be selected from the digits 1, 2, 4, and 5, because in this box we've not placed 1, 2, 4, and 5 yet. In this box we've not placed 1, 2, 4, and 5. So those squares are 1, 2, 4, and 5. And now this square is broken. It's got no possible value. The other way of thinking about this, actually, though, is to say I'm, I've got to put 3, 6, 7, 8, and 9 on this diagonal. I've got one square there, one square there. This could be a 3, 6, 7, 8, and 9. This could be a 3, 6, 7, 8, and 9. There are only four squares on the diagonal that can contain those five different digits, which is a, yeah, it's, a, it's the same thing, just from another perspective. So... All of this means we can press delete again, get rid of all this, and we can finally put a confident digit in the middle of the grid. This is 7. And now we know there's a 7. Ah, yeah, now we know there's a 7 in each of the crosses. Now that's very important down here. Because if there's a 7 in this cage, it's got to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. It's got to be a 7 in all of these as well. This is not 7. And... Okay, now, now we take stock and work out what's going on. 33... The two ways of making 33... Both use 7. Ah, I see, but we're going to have to have different ways of making 33 in these crosses otherwise we're going to run into the problem that we ran into when we had six in the middle so these are two different versions of the 33 cage twenty one including a seven means the other four cells add to fourteen which is very unhelpful because that doesn't even mean there needs to be a one in here because two plus three plus four plus five adds to fourteen so, okay, so what do we do now? These squares have got to be 5, 6, 8, and 9. Uh, right, sorry, I know I'm... I know I'm being a bit slow here, but I'm not exactly seeing what I'm meant to do now. So this this cage here is either going to be 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. 3, 6. Right, okay. Uh, Yeah, there's a, there is an interesting point about that. I'm not sure what it's going to do for us, but if we think about this diagonal and ask where 8 and 9 go on this diagonal, we, c we know that each cage contains an 8 and a 9. So 8 and 9 can't go those two squares, can't go in these three squares, and can't go in those squares either. So 8 and 9 have to form a pair on this diagonal. which means this square can't be an 8 or a 9 because it sees whichever way round this 8, 9 pair is, it sees this square. So this square sees 8, 9 and 7. I'm going to do a, a bit of good lift notation there. This can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6, which is a bit grasp or clutching at straws, isn't it? Um, Okay, um, 
eight, nine, two, three, four, five, and six. Where? What are we meant to look at now? How can we do anything with the knight's moves from these? These are too far away, I think, to interact. Um, so, are there other cells in this puzzle that are meant to be weak when we think about them from a trigger, trigger bounce perspective? I'll use my technique of seeing where my cursor is. Is this square re weak from a Tigger Bounce perspective? This square sees that square. One, two, three. It sees that square. This square. This square. This square. This square, this square. It sees the ones that are two away as well, doesn't it? it sees. Whoops. Uh, it sees that one as well. Ah, okay. So it sees that's interesting. That's interesting. Let me just think about this. So it sees this one and this one and this one and this one. That okay. So Right, that is very, very beautiful and peculiar because that means that we can view this pattern as an extra region in the Sudoku. That is my contention. Those squares there are the digits 1 to 9 in some order. I do not know what the order is, unfortunately, but they are the digits 1 to 9. And that's because if we think about each of the corner squares in box five they obviously see each other so they have to be different from the other green cells in box five but this square here sees this one this one this one and this one by um by the tigger bounce move so all of these could not be what's in this square now this you can see each of these squares also sees each of the other squares in this green collection because we well we can run the, the argument on the corner squares in exactly the same way of, that we ran it for this square but we also can see that this square for example sees these two by sudoku and that along the diagonal and the same will be true for each option so this sort of five well is this i don't know i think of this as what you might see the pattern of dots on a dice that, ha that added up to five but that may just be me it does look like an x as well but this small Sudoku X is the digits 1 to 9. Now, what does that mean? That means that... Well, I'll tell you what that means. Um, that means that... Let's get rid of the purples for a moment. And I'll tell you what that means. Those squares, these squares, these squares, and these squares, together with the central cell of the grid, is another set of the digits 1 to 9. That must be true, because we know that the two diagonals contain two sets of the digits 1 to 9, except for this square, which is in both sets. So it's sort of the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, sorry, it's the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9, twice plus this seven but if i've just subtracted one set of the digits one two three four five six eight and nine in the green squares i must be left with another set in the purple squares now that 
This seems very complicated, but that means if we look at the purple set, I've got 8 and 9 here and here. So that square can't be an 8 or a 9, because that would be impossible. So this is a 5 or a 6, because we know we can't have any more 8s and 9s in any of the purples. Now... This is absolutely fascinating, but unfortunately it's not cracking the puzzle. Uh, how long have I had? 20 minutes, oh dear. Um, okay. So... I must have to look at other squares, I think, that have some sort of constraint on them other than these corner squares. Corner s Oh no! Ah! Sorry! Oh my goodness me, I've made a mis- well, I haven't made a mistake. I've made- I've made this more complicated than it needed to be. Okay, everything I have said is true and very interesting indeed. Let's ignore the fact that this square here, it sees those two squares by Tigger Bounce and those two squares by along the diagonal. And that's beautiful and annoying because it means that whatever goes in this square, whatever goes in this square, has to go in the cross in box one. Now, if this was a two, it can't go in the cross because the cross adds up to 33 and I can't make four squares add up to 31 so this has to be a five. Oh goodness so that's a two and now there's a five in my 33 um, cage so it must be four five seven eight nine these squares now must be one two three and six and presumably we're going to be able to have some joy with this elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, it's the simplest way is this one. One and three. Well, there's no way you can put one in this 33 cage, so you must put three into it. So that, and that confirms, of course, that this cross is different from this cross. So these squares here have got to be three, six, seven, eight, or nine. Therefore, those squares are one, two, four, and five. Five can't go in those squares because of the diagonal. Maybe, yeah, I can do the same on the other side. Three can't go in those squares. Um, we can't put eight in the 17 cage, so that's a four. That can't be four anymore. Um, maybe we can't do more with that one, actually. That can't be eight because of the um, the Tigger Bounce. That can't be eight because of the Tigger Bounce from this square. There's going to be loads of these opportunities to whittle away at clues here. Um, what about this one? So this is a 21 cage. It's got a seven in it. So it can't have a nine in it as well. If this had seven and nine, seven and nine add to 16, there is a knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic. How would we make the other three digits add up to five using different digits? It would be impossible because one plus two plus three add up to six. So this is a six, this is a nine. There is a six. There's a six in the 21 cage. So we've got two cells adding to 13. The other three cells would add up to eight. So they must include a one but they could be one, two, five, or one, three, four. Uh, this can't be four or six anymore though. So these squares definitely have a six in them. Together with this one, they definitely have a, a one in them as well. Um, eight and nine are definitely not in the cage in box three. So these squares have got to be include eight and nine. Okay, so have we now 
broken the back of this or are we going to run into more problems? I'd really like to know what this cage has in it. Because otherwise I'm going to have to spot something else to actually get this moving again. Maybe I can do... Can I do more with the diagonal here? One, two, four and six. No. Ah, yeah, hang on, I can do a little bit more. I can do a little bit more using my disjoints or my extra region here. This extra region has got one, two, it still hasn't got one, two, eight, and nine in it. Now these squares here can't be eight and nine because the eight and the nine is already appearing on the diagonal. So these must be one and two. Uh, so let's get rid of six from that one, four from this one. These must be eight and nine. So at least this sort of big or small X logic in green has given us some, some sort of restriction. This can't be eight or nine anymore then. So on this diagonal, I've not yet placed one, two, three, ah, six, can't go here. Ah, hang on. Yeah, there we go, five. This diagonal still needs, that can't be five, it still needs one, two, and three on it. So this is one, two, or three. It's not one, because there must be a one in the 21 cage. Um, so five all of a sudden has become interesting. We've got a one, two pair here as well on this diagonal. So this square is a six. Come on, keep going. That square is a four. Yeah, and now if you take a careful look at the purples, you can see that we're left with a one, two, three, eight, nine quintuple, which is exactly what we'd expect based off the logic we did earlier. Six is not here anymore. So six in box seven is there. This square is not six. There's an eight, nine pair now in row seven. So this is not eight, nine. This is not six. It's incredibly intricate, isn't it? Six, six, I know where six goes in column two because of the Tigger bounce. This is a Tigger bounce away from this six and this is a Tigger bounce away from that square. So six goes there. So six must be in one of these three squares. It can't be in that one because that's a taxi cab move of four away from this square. So six is in one of those two. That's a little bit interesting in the context of this square, which can no longer be a six, because if this was a six, it would rule both of those out by, by Tigger move. Um, six, five. Five now in box four might be restricted. Look, a bit of Sudoku, a bit of Tigger bounce from this one, and we lock five into one of those two cells, I think. I'm not sure whether I can do better than that. I can't see how immediately this square is no longer a five, therefore. Now five is locked into one of those two squares. Which... It's not five. Um, it doesn't seem to do anything. I'm moving on with my eyes. Four. Oh, where's my cursor gone? Fours are not there. Two. One, two pair in this box. One, two pair in this box gives me a five here. Five. Five, it's the same logic as it was with six now in terms of Tigger bouncing. Five can't get to there because of the Tigger bounce. It can't go to there because of Tigger bounce. This is a five. Five, five, five can't go here by Tigger Bounce, so five goes in one of those two. This can't be a six because of this six here. Oh, so six is now, six is now definitely in one of these three squares. 
this this has got one two or three in it oh yeah this isn't six okay or seven because of this diagonal six and seven are already here so six is in one of those two seven can still be in all four positions but six is in one of the ah look yeah here we go six six in one of these two so six is in one of these three it's not this one by sudoku it's not this one by tigger bounce it's this one we get another digit so six is now in one of these three it's not in this one because of the tigger bounce it's not in this one by sudoku so it's that one so now neither of those are sixes and this is a six this is just it's fascinating and very unusual because I'm so used to knight's moves. I'm looking in all the wrong places. Um, okay. Now, what can we do next? Is there something easy we can do here? Or even something complicated that at least I can spot? We've got a uh, one, two pair here. That's not a one. So one's in one of those four positions. Oh, hang on. I've made this complicated again, haven't I? Well, I have, but it's not easy to see. Okay, sorry. I've just noticed something. When I highlighted these squares, I was wondering whether there were cells that saw all three of all four of these squares, and there is. This square sees all four of those squares, but of course this square also sees that one. So actually this square, this square, this square, and this square see all of the of the crosses that they're, they're around. So this square here sees all of this cross and all of this cross. So whatever goes in this square, it's probably incredibly restricted actually because it's in a column where it can only be three, four, eight, and nine. Um, it, this square cannot appear in here. So it cannot be four, eight, and nine. This has to be a three. And let's just show you why. I mean, if that's a four, for example, look, you can no longer put four in there or those two because of the Tigger bounce. So this has to be three. And that's going to be beautiful. It's be this puzzle is brilliant. It really is. Because now this square cannot be a three. But more importantly, none of those squares can now be a three. So there is now no, no four in the 21 cage either. Because the 21 cage must now be one, six, seven. Let's delete it all actually. Uh, let's just delete the whole of that cage. It's got to be one, six, seven, two, five. So this square is a three. That's not a three. That's a three by Sudoku, just using these threes in the grid. That's not a three. Um, might be more we can do with threes here, but let's that can't be three. I'm not sure that this this sees that by knight's move. Oh look, this three sees that by tigger bounce, I should say. So three is in one of those squares. So three is in one of the three is in one of these squares, but by tigger bounce it's not that one. That's a three. So now none of those squares can be three. This square must be a three. This is just, it's bonkers, this. Absolutely bonkers. Now this is a three by Sudoku. So now three is in one of those two squares. Oh no, three is not. Three is here, exactly there. I must be able to do all the threes now. Yes, this three gives me a three here. And all of a sudden, I think all the threes have just got placed. And I know I haven't looked at this square yet. And this square, I mean, this, if this isn't a naked single, then that's incredible because this square cannot be one, two, five, six, seven. It can't be eight, nine. So it's got to be three or four and it can't be three. This is a four. 
which means this square is a four by Sudoku. This square is not four. Four. Yeah, look, it's this one. This one bounces in here to get rid of that square being a four, places four in this square by Sudoku. That places four in this square by Sudoku. I've now got a seven, eight, nine triple here. So this is a five. That's a five. I've done a lot of fives now as well. Can I finish fives off? Or do I need to keep thinking about fours? Let's look at fours, actually, because I can see, look, I've got fours down there. So this square is a four. Four goes here by Sudoku. It's just using the fours in the grid. I must have done all the... F no, I haven't. That's a four as well. Now I think I have done all the fours. Let's come back to fives now. As a weird, as the other thing I'm noticing now is there is a weird symmetry look. Threes, fours, fives, and sixes. So if the symmetry continues, you would expect maybe this square has to be a five, and maybe. I'm not sure which way round it goes. It goes, these two squares would have to be five and six. Um, oh, look, six can't be in those squares. Is there a way of doing better than that? It probably is. This square has to be eight or nine, just to complete this box. So this square... Oh, this square can't be five. There's so much to see here. There really is. This square now has to be one, two, or seven by Sudoku. Probably there's a knight's move thing that's restricting one of these squares. I'm really interested to see whether I can keep pushing these fives and sixes. Or it... I've done all the threes. I've done all the fours. This square can't be a five. This five means that square can't be a five. So five is in one of these two cells. Is it, can it be on the diagonal? No, look, it comes through here. So that square is a five. That means this square is a five, which is consistent with my expectation now that this square is going to be a six at some stage. One, two, seven here. Yeah, this has to be a six. That does it. And that has to be a six. Good grief. And now in this column, I've not placed eight and nine. Whoopsie. So that square's eight or nine. Seven, eight, nine. Ah, seven, eight, nine here. So that square's not seven. One, two, eight, nine. Okay, that's not unexpected. But this square, that's got to be one or two as well. 8 has to be down here by Sudoku, using this 8. So, how do we finish this? Um, oh, I've not done this one. That's a 5. Seven, eight, nine, triple. 1 has to appear in those squares. The other thing I could think about doing, and you know I'm going to do this now, I could colour this, you know. Can I colour the either the 1s and the 2s or the 8s and the 9s? Um, 9 has to be... The symmetry is weird here. Like, 9s are down here, 8s are up here. I've got one, two, sevens here, one, two, sevens here, eight, nines here, eight, nines here. On the other side, the symmetry is around ones and twos. I bet this can't be a six. It can't be a six. That, yes, I'm not picking up on it very well today, but there is some strange stuff going on. Now, this square has to be a seven, eight, or a nine by Sudoku. It can't be nine. So this is seven or eight. Right, let's let's get rid of colouring, I think. I, I think I've done what I can with these extra regions. And now I want to think about whether or not I can do something. Oh, 
either with ones and twos or with eights and nines. This square, seven, eight, nine here, this square has to be one or two. I'm trying to decide which one is more likely to be profitable. I'm also trying to decide which which one is going to be. I can actually see some way of making progress. Look, I've got ones and twos and eights and nines in these columns and rows as well. This is we ah 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 those two, those two are now linked. That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to go with ones and twos. So this square, let's make that purple. We'll make that one green. Now this would have to be green, and that no doesn't tell us. Um, oh bobbins. This this is purple, so that must be green. Ah, yeah, it does actually. If I use the the tigger bounce, so now let's have a look down here. This square can't be green because of that green. This square can't be green because of that green and the tigger bounce. So that square is green. It's therefore not seven, which means this square is seven. This square is purple. This square is a one or a two to complete the row. Oh, that's going to be powerful because look now, this square is not green. It's purple and it sees a two. So purple is one. And now we might cook with gas. Now green is two. Does that do it? Um, maybe. I'm not sure. This has got to be two and green, therefore. This has got to be one and purple. This square is a one because it's not green. By the Tigger Bounce. One, one, oh, that's not actually that helpful. One, two get taken out of those squares. One becomes purple, two becomes green everywhere. So green, no, I still don't know which of those is green unless I'm missing something, which is quite likely. What about one? No, that can't be one. Ah! Oh, one here. There's a two. Okay, two is green. So this is one and purple. Green must be here because it's the only place it can go by Sudoku of all things. Uh, oops, I missed the color. So now greens, I should be able to place green here and that's a two. And I should be able to do all the ones now. Oh, and I can probably get some of these sevens fixed as, as well. Um, so this one is purple. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I should be able to do the one here. Is it here? Yes. That is a purple one. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've now got all the ones and the twos. And are we just left with lots of sevens, eights, and nines, I think? So let's have a look at those. So seven, eight, nine. So we are seven, eight, nine. 789, 789. There's something appropriate, I think, about finishing this puzzle with 7s, 8s, and 9s. So now, why don't we get rid of the colouring of the 1s and the 2s? And instead, let's colour 8s and 9s and see whether we can do the same. So, um, oh, don't just die a death there, please. You rotten thing. Oh, no, hang on, look. It's the sa I bet it's the same. It's the same as those two were connected. Look, this purple is connected to that square, which must be green. So that becomes purple. And look, it is exactly the same logic. This is an amazing puzzle. Now, which one of these is purple? It's not that one by Sudoku. It's not this one by Tigger Bounce from here. That is purple. It's therefore not seven. This is seven. That's not seven, therefore. Therefore, it's green which means this is green. Now I'm going to need an eight or a nine to disambiguate this puzzle, aren't I? There must be one that's going to help me here. Um, this has now got to be, oh, there you go. Yeah, this has got to be purple. 
by Sudoku of all things, and look, we know it's an eight or a nine, but it, so this square needs to be eight. So purple is eight. Um, and that means green is nine. And now that moves me this square, this square. Um, this square is seven now, this is nine. I, I will try and fix the, so what have we got here? Have we finished this now? Not quite, maybe. Nines are all green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I must be able to do this. Yes, I can. That one's a nine and it's green. Therefore, this is a seven. This is a seven. This is an eight. And if I color the eights in, I think this is the solution to the puzzle. It is a brilliant puzzle. Click tick. Yes. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Not easy as well. Really um, fooled me many times, actually. Um, I can't, I think I made a real horlicks of the opening logic. Not not necessarily getting the fact that the this central square had to be in all of the crosses. I think I did that okay. But then I don't think I needed this extra region logic. I think all I needed to do was to appreciate these corner squares had to go in the crosses in each case. That would have given me, and then I needed to think about these squares and the way they were impacted by the crosses that they sort of shared. And that might have made this video 15 minutes shorter, but I hope you still enjoyed me struggling through it. I loved it. It was an absolutely brilliant puzzle. I look forward to the comments. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.